Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome to this very layered five-part series on why I am choosing to break up with imposter syndrome and why I'm inviting you to do the same. Now, it will reveal itself later on as we go through this process. Me breaking up with imposter syndrome does not mean that I have it sorted, does not mean that I will always have the right answers, does not mean that I think that I know better than everybody else because I really don't. Um, It doesn't mean that now I'm going to coast. But it's this phrase of imposter syndrome that I have an issue with. And yeah, let's go into it. So first and foremost, I have been around this phrase a lot over the last 20 years. And I didn't know about it probably for the first 20 years of my life. And this is where I want to begin because what happened was I took this phrase on and I attached it to myself like like a badge that I should be wearing. Or maybe you've done this, I definitely have. When you've worn a, (laughs) this makes me sound so old, you've worn a fashion item and you know in every part of your bones, every piece of your bones, every bone in your body, that's what I mean. You put this item on and you know that you are maybe not aligned to this. However, what's been said out there is like, yeah, you should be wearing this. Like this, this is the thing. I remember like having this massive Reebok coat when I was at school. I mean, it was the 90s, like everything was puffed up. Everything (laughs) was, yeah, was major. Um, And I remember buying this Reebok coat and I bought it because sort of everybody else had one. And so in my head, I was like, okay, I'm going to have this Reebok coat and it was kind of a a price that was sort of, uh, you know, workable. And my mum wouldn't buy me an Adidas jacket because she was like, there's no warmth in it, which now as a parent, I fully um, subscribe to. Uh, Yeah, parents were actually right most of the time. And I remember putting this, I think it was called Intersport or JD Sport or something like this. I remember putting this Reebok coat on. And in my head, I was like, yeah, great. This ticks all the boxes. It's going to be right for school. I'm not going to draw attention to myself. But equally, like, it's it's sort of similar to what everybody else is wearing. But when I look back on it, there was nothing flattering or nice about this coat. Like, this coat did not fit. This coat did not suit me. The style was really weird. It also had loads of baggy material under the arm. So I literally just wore it like that the whole time. And the thing with imposter syndrome is I almost feel like it's been planted and expected this phrase that not many people actually know what it means within us. And because it's fashionable to talk about and it's something that lots of us are asked about the whole time, we somehow feel that we should take it on, that we should own a piece of it, that we should be in the conversation about. But actually, we don't need to be. And imposter syndrome can show up in all kinds of different forms, different flavors, different moments, different ways. And actually, what our own job is to do is to look at what is actually underneath it. So the umbrella phrase of imposter syndrome might be, I've got imposter syndrome. But actually, there are so many other conversations underneath that. So very rarely do I walk into a room and say, I feel like an imposter. That's not the terminology that I use. That's not the phrase that I use. But will it have similar phrases running alongside that that I 
very much recognize and am familiar with yes absolutely and they can look like I don't feel good enough what if I mess up I mean on an extreme level like what if I never work again um what if I completely embarrass myself what if I let somebody down those are the things that come up to the surface not the I'm now feeling like an imposter And actually, that static position of I feel this doesn't help me in the moment because I don't know what to do with imposter. It's like having something, uh, yeah, really abstract in a room that you're like, you're not quite sure what to do with it. And actually what we need to do and what I need to do is look at what else is going on when that situation shows up? So today, as your first exercise, I would love you to examine this term. So other people might label this of like, when was the last, and they do this in podcast interviews all the time, when was the last time you felt like an imposter? Or do you feel like an imposter? And it's your invitation your job, maybe, your uh, time to explore what the nuance of that is for you. And sometimes this is some deep work of asking yourself what your biggest fears are, because usually that's what's underneath. It's the, it's the fear. It's the fear of the situation. What if I'm not enough? What if I'm going to let everybody down? Um, what if I fail? Um this phrase often comes up of like, what if I get found out? And actually what's underneath that is what if I am asked to leave? What if I am pointed out and singled out and the shame and the humiliation of somebody like taking you out of the room? I mean, we would see this at school, wouldn't we, sometimes where somebody was like excluded from the classroom And some of the kids didn't care. They were like, yeah, (laughs) I'm going. Bye, everyone. But sometimes people would, or, or even it goes back to those things of being picked for games and you being the last one there. We can all very much connect with that feeling. So that is task one for you today to really explore this phrase of imposter syndrome. And instead of just shoving everything into the imposter syndrome cupboard of like, oh, I feel like that. It must be the imposter syndrome. Oh, well, this often comes up. Is that imposter syndrome? I want you to welcome a conversation with yourself and say, hey, what actually is this? What is this in our terms? What what are we doing here? What voices are running What soundtrack is going on? What do I need to pay attention to? That is step one, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for step two.